Hey guys, this is Miss Arlequin, and in today's lesson, we are going to be previewing our vocabulary words for our first text from Unit 4, Coming to America. Our first text is a story called Funny and Farsi. And in today's lesson, we are going to write sentences for the new vocabulary word using context clues. All right, so the first thing you want to do is take your vocabulary sheet, and you're going to rate each of the vocabulary words. Remember, four is you're an expert on the word, and one, you've never seen or heard the word before. Our first word is upheaval. Second word is luxury. Third is bucolic. Fourth is proximity. Fifth is uncanny. And sixth is foreshadowing. Take a moment to circle the ratings for each of the words. All right, so let's start with our first word, which is a noun, upheaval. An upheaval is a very big change that often causes problems. So an example would be when you start something new, like you move and you go to a new school, doing that can cause an upheaval in your life. It causes a very big change. So starting at a new school can be a major upheaval or a major change for a child. All right, and so you could also talk about things in society that cause massive changes. For example, the civil rights movement in the 1960s caused a lot of change in this country. It ended segregation, and for the first time, this country started to move into a time period where people of all races were considered equal. So the civil rights movement marked a period of social upheaval or social change in the United States. Keep in mind that upheaval has to do with not just regular little changes like you change the channel or you change your clothes. An upheaval is a major change that causes a lot of stress or a lot of positive changes, but there is a lot of things that change after an upheaval. All right, our next word is luxury. Luxury is a noun. Um, it can also be used as an adjective. You can describe things as being luxurious. Something that's a luxury is a great comfort or pleasure that you may want, but you do not need. So luxuries in life are things that are kind of extra. People want luxuries, but you don't need them to survive. So just having clothing, having a house, um, eating food every day, those are things that you need. But then within each of those categories, there are some more expensive, expensive houses, expensive clothing, expensive foods that you don't necessarily have to spend that extra money on. Spending the extra money on those products would be a luxury. Eating dessert twice in one day feels like a luxury. Honestly, even for some people, eating dessert just once would by some be considered to be a luxury. He spent a fortune on expensive cars and other luxuries. The fact that the cars are expensive goes to show that they are a luxury because you can have a car and not spend that much money on it. The more you spend on it, it's probably then considered to be a luxurious car. All right, our next word is bucolic. Bucolic is an adjective that basically just means relating to very pleasant countryside. So any kind of landscape that is not in the city, that's very beautiful to look at, very peaceful, could be described as bucolic. Many bucolic landscapes are threatened by development. And so here, you can see that the adjective bucolic is describing the landscape. And the landscape is so beautiful. However, the building of houses and buildings, development of the environment, is threatening the beauty of the natural environment. My grandparents live in a charming bucolic farmhouse in Vermont. So in this case, the farmhouse is being described as bucolic. Because it's a farmhouse, usually farmhouses are located in rural communities, so it is appropriate to describe um, a farmhouse as bucolic or any other building or thing that would be part of the countryside. All right, our next word is proximity. Proximity is a noun. 
That means the nearness of something in distance or time. And so usually people pair up the word proximity with adjectives that could describe how close or far something is. So you might say something is in close proximity or it is not in close proximity. We chose our house because of its proximity or nearness to the school. People are attracted to the area by the proximity of several beaches. So the beaches are in close proximity to the houses. All right, our next word is uncanny. Uncanny is an adjective, and I know that we are familiar with the word canny, but uncanny does not mean not canny, which is what you would probably expect it to mean. But uncanny is a word all on its own that basically means very strange and difficult to explain. My best friend has an uncanny similarity to my sister. You wouldn't expect your friend to look like your sister. They're not related by blood. If anything, you would expect for you yourself to look like your sister. So for your best friend to look like your sister, it could be described as uncanny. It's strange. You can't really explain it. Due to an uncanny resemblance to the people in these centuries-old photos, some people wonder if Nicolas Cage and Jay-Z are actually vampires. And so here you can see this is very popular online to find old photos that look like modern-day celebrities. This picture actually comes from the 1920s during the Harlem Renaissance. And this is a man that is not Jay-Z. However, he does have a uncanny resemblance to him. Same thing here. This is a photograph of a man from the 1800s who is not the actor Nicolas Cage. However, when you look at the two photos side by side, there is an uncanny resemblance. She had an uncanny resemblance to someone I had seen before. So again, you see here uh, additional photos of people who strangely look like each other. You can't really explain it. It's just uncanny. All right, our final word is foreshadowing. Now, foreshadowing is a verb that means indicating or hinting about a future event. Now, we've talked about foreshadowing many times in ELA class because it is a literary element. It's a technique that authors sometimes use when they want to drop hints about what's going to happen later in the story. But it's not just something you can apply to literature. You could talk about things in life that foreshadow other things, like the drizzle of rain foreshadowed the coming storm. I knew that the storm was coming because of the rain. Her early interest in airplanes foreshadowed her later career as a pilot. It was a hint that she was going to grow up to become a pilot. So something foreshadows, it is the hint. It's helping you predict what's going to happen in the future. All right, so now it's your turn to apply the vocabulary words to your own writing. There are sentence frames on the screen that you may or may not use. Keep in mind that when you write your sentences, you want to make sure that you use the word correctly and that you are giving enough details that someone who does not know what the word means can figure it out. So those details are going to be your context clues. I've also included a column on your vocabulary charts of synonyms. Some of the synonyms are actually some more challenging versions of the words. And so an extra bonus will be for anyone who can use one of those challenging synonyms in their sentences.